welcome did Hiras you are watching a recap of the Asian session. Antipodi in stocks kicked off the new week at the lowest level in more than two months. The equity market in Japan also fell sharply, extending losses from the previous session. The financial and technology sectors were the hardest hit. The money bubble inflated the, by global central banks over the past two years seems to have finally burst and thus dragging the US dollar down. On a Friday, US banking regulators took control of a Silicon Valley bank. Signature Bank was also closed on a Sunday by regulators, the second to fail in a week. The sudden collapse of a year stack heavy lender SFP Financial Group fueled a broad market sell off at the end of the last week. As a result, shares plunged by 60% in the trading before being halted. The company took this step to strengthen its balance sheet against the backdrop of losses from the sale of bonds. In other words, Silicon Valley Bank which lends uh, primarily to IT startups, has failed to raise additional capital. Silvergate, another bank from a Silicon Valley, has also faced a shortage of funds and needs urgent support. The second largest US financial conglomerate works with the crypto assets and acts as one of the main bridges between cryptocurrencies and fight money. It seems that the problems of the crypto would, after um, the collapse of the FTX crypto exchange, are beginning to affect the banking system. In this situation, investors fear that banks will limit lending sharply. To stem the panic, the Federal Reserve Treasury Department and Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation published a joint statement yesterday in which they said that um, the Fed would make additional funding available for eligible financial institutions to help banks meet the needs of all the depositors. Moreover, the Ministry of Finance admitted that other banks in the country faced difficulties along with the SFB and Signature Bank. In the light of recent events, important data on the non-farm payrolls for February took a back seat. The report turned out to be quite controversial and caused confusion in the markets on Friday. The U.S. Department of Labor said uh, that the employees added 311,000 jobs in February. The figure exceeded forecasts, indicating a robust labor market. The unemployment rate rose unexpectedly to 3.6%, while the monthly wage growth slowed. That's, um, Statistics further complicated the Fed's decision on interest rates. At the same time, recent data is fears that labor market tightness would lead to more aggressive steps by the regulator. However, the situation around American banks has ruined all plans. According to the FedWatch tool, almost 96% of speculators now expect the Fed to lift the key interest rate by a quarter of a percentage point. Thus, the aftermath of the Silicon Valley Bank collapse and the Signature Bank has marked instability in this sector, casting doubt on the hopes for further increased rate hikes by the US Central Bank. A further complication is that the Fed is not going to provide any public comments until the end of the meeting should yield for March 22. Nevertheless, traders may take notice of a speech by the US President Joe Biden today. In addition, his administration will hold a briefing in a Congress. While U.S. regulators have announced plans to support the depositors and provide a new lending program to financial institutions, investors are anxious as the losses will not be offset. Therefore, the U.S. stock market is not the only one suffering a sell-off. 
The US currency is also posting losses amid assessments of a further system uh, risks, and the US dollar index fell to 103.90 in the Asian session. The greenback has been declining for the third session in a row, wherever they had looked for the index measuring the value of the dollar against the basket of six foreign currencies is rather gloomy. The US dollar index kicked off the new week by trading sideways in the range of 103.60 and 104.40. Most likely, the greenback will remain at risk until US President Joe Biden delivers a speech. Speaking of the Japanese yen, it looks like um, it's a time to resume its safe haven status. Moreover, Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirakutsu Matsuo also made a statement today. Japanese financial institutions have a substantial liquidity and capital base, and at this time we don't think it's likely this bankruptcy will have a major impact on the stability of Japan's financial system. The official commented on this situation. Although the events of recent years and months have shown that reliability and security can easily become empty words, Japan with its conservative central bank looks quite solid and may well attract capital inflows. Given that the fiscal year ends on March 31 in the country, many Japanese companies convert their dollar profits into yen. On a Monday, the Japanese currency hit a new one month low and gained value against the US dollar, settling near the previous one week low of 134.40. The recent rise in the quotes can be attributed to Treasury yields and the risk sentiment. These indicators are declining and the dollar yen pair has been trading downwards for the third consecutive day. In the Asian session on Monday, the yen continued to gain value, moving within the red price corridor of 133.50 and 135.10. Last week, the Australian dollar came under pressure from a statement by the head of the Reserve Bank of Australia. Philip Lowe softened his hawkish outlook on interest rates and even admitted that the regulator is closer to the point where it will be appropriate to pose interest rate increases. However, today antipodean currencies are gaining value, driven by external news releases rather than internal ones. The RTUSD pair posted the biggest daily gains since early February. On a Monday, the Aussie came close to the resistance level of 0.6680. Then the Aussie started to trade sideways above the support level of 0.6564. And this uncertainty can be attributed to a weaker US dollar. However, this trend is likely to be short-lived. Today, the Australian dollar may well face strong resistance while moving along the five-week downward line. The New Zealand dollar also recorded in an early trade. After testing a four months low, the Kiwi rose sharply to 0.6197. In the Asian session, the currency continued to trade upwards in the range of 0.6135 and 0.6203. As you can see, the current week is going to be busy. The US will report data on inflation and retail sales. The focus will also be on any signs of a crisis in the financial sector after the failure of a Silicon Valley bank. Furthermore, traders are awaiting the ECB's decision on interest rates. China is set to release data on industrial production and retail sales. Watch video review from my Insta Forex TV regularly and stay up to date with the latest market news. That's all. See you in a few hours.